Well, hello again there, YouTube. It's PD Two Finger, and recently I had recommended you guys check out a documentary, 1981, Film Board of Canada. Hey, Kita, you want to get a treat? My my cat's crying. Uh, so this is a documentary movie about a Canadian daredevil. And the guy's name is Ken Carter. I had never heard of Ken, but the movie, the documentary, is really worth your time. I don't, I don't want like to... The way it was described to me was... Minimal. And I watched it, and I, I really... I just love this movie. And I recommended it to... Uh, my YouTube and a couple of my regulars watched it and commented and said that they really enjoyed it too. So if you haven't yet seen Devil at Your Heels is the name of the film. This, this video that I'm making right now was just about a friend, a guy that I grew up with whose name was Ken, a very similar name. Ken Carter is this guy's name. So this particular Ken, he had an, a, another nickname I never called him that name. It, wa it wasn't really... Uh, I think the guy who hung that moniker on him um, was just one of, the, one of the few people I met in my life that I really would say that um, just there's really nothing good about this person. Just like, not a good person. So, uh, all that being said, this dude uh, had been through some traumatic stuff. He lived with his mom and his sister. I remember they had a they had an odd lot with a barn in the back, and I believe they did have horses. His mom wore like horse lady, like with the tan and the boots and the crop and all that. And he was like the stable boy kind of. He was tall good looking guy and and he liked he he told tall tales he would tell these stories he would come by he wouldn't leave he would stay 18 hours and he did this tr he, he would do this anywhere he was welcome anywhere he could go and basically he didn't drink he, he smoked cigarettes and he, he smoked a bit and I had a friend who had moved from Chicago and his parents uh, bought a real nice house. And this guy was kind of like, uh, I don't know, he just thought he was like better than everybody else, like because he had a little bit of money or something. And like he wouldn't keep his weed at his home because, you know, that was, that was below him. So he would keep it, he would keep like a quarter pound or a pound of this weed at this other guy's house. I remember going over there, I would call this dude, he would come out, lean on your window, drop the bag of weed in the window, you'd give him the money, he would tell you a story, and then you would get out of there. And it was a real convenient, like, drive-through weed service, this guy Ken, and my friend. And uh, the only thing was, like, he would get goofy with these stories, like, unbelievable. And as, like, he would tell you one, and then you'd be like, wow, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know how to react to that. It's obviously untrue. And then he would go, hey, wait, 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 you think that's good? And then he would come up with another one. And it would just go on and on and on. Now, <laughs> there, the end of the story, he does, he, at this point, after 2008, he does have a real story. So we will get to that, but I wanted to give it as an example one of his stories that I remember because when I was watching this film, in the beginning of it, the dude recants one of his Daredevil stunts gone awry, and you can tell that he's worked this one up. He's retold this several times. This is one of his lines that are stories that he tells women at the bar, you know, and it it, it seemed a bit embellished and retold and polished and I actually got the impression that maybe this movie that I was watching wasn't legitimate that this was like a 
Spinal Tap thing, you know. But it's not. The movie's real. Anyway, watch this thing. It's a great movie, and it reminded me of this guy. So I wanted to uh, share the story that Ken used to tell. And his father, who was not in the picture, his father had told him, Hey, son, this field of trees here, I need you to cut all these trees down before dinner. And it's, uh, it's kind of a daunting task because it's a whole huge field of trees and it's got to be done before dinner. So Ken does not know what to do at this point. He walks into the garage where he looks to the right and he sees a go-kart and he looks to the left and he sees a chainsaw so as the story proceeds the chainsaw becomes attached to the go-kart and he cuts the whole field of trees down with time for baseball before dinner this is the story one one of them now, I believe that's, that's a uh, Speed Racer episode, isn't it? In any event, fast forward, uh, the last time that I saw this guy was probably 1998. And 10 years or so later, it's 2008. My wife is on her way home from work, and she comes in the door and says there's something going on uh, over there by 5th Avenue cutoff the, the police uh, and there's uh, five helicopters flying around and it's barricaded and there's SWAT team and that 5th Avenue cutoff, that street that's where this guy lives and it's not it's like there, it isn't a whole huge subdivision. There's only a few houses back there. It's like a dead end. People drag race on it. It's weird. It, like it comes up and then it turns. And it's kind of an abrupt turn, so they've got a super bright light on a pole in his yard. And what had happened, he had been hunting. I, believe, I, I don't know the story by the hunting. Was he doing it for fun or was were they eating that meat? I don't know. Um... He had shot the light out, and I remember later hearing one of the neighbors complaining about him, saying that he was he had this rifle, which more than likely was a it was a pellet gun, which is it's in between a BB gun and a 22 rifle. You got your pellet air rifle, and that's this, you cock it. So it's cheap. You only you don't need to buy the compressed air CO2 cartridges, which are kind of expensive. Um, and it can be powerful. You can hunt small game. You can take out rabbits and squirrels. So he had developed a reputation. At least one neighbor is doing this in inappropriate. Uh, and again, I'm not here to throw shade on this guy or say he was bad. I'm merely retelling the story, and like I said, he was my friend. But according to this neighbor, he had become a nuisance because he was hunting on other people's property. And again, I, I don't know what the situation was. This is what this person said. And you know how people can be when someone else has a has a weapon. You know. But uh, Ken obviously didn't appreciate this unbelievably bright light in the, in their front yard. I mean, it was like a second sun. And they had that there because the road curved. And it was like, kind of like all pine tree. Like it was really dark where that turn was. I could see how you could easily not see it and drive right into that forest at night. If you were going too fast or maybe you were a little tired. So he shot, shoots the lights out. And then the workers, I believe it was Commonwealth Edison, show up. To repair this thing and at some point he is pointing the rifle out of the dwelling doing a get off my land and then I think there was some fireworks where he was like maybe they thought because the initial reports were that he was shooting real rounds 
So I think it was firecrackers and he's pointing a gun, which is like, like, dude, it's 2008. You can't do that. You know, you're, you're going to regret this. So they, they got his, his mom was there in a garage of a neighbor and the chief of police was trying to talk to her to see if they could get her to go over there and talk some sense into him. Like, you need to come out. You know, you need to surrender. And he's he's playing hardball with, was it 21 police departments? The SWAT team came from Skokie, which was, it's like uh, north of the Loop, north of Chicago. And we're 17 miles west of the Loop, so, like, this is, that's like, it's like 35 miles away the SWAT team came. So it was a it was a big deal to stand off with this guy, my friend, who I grew up with. Um, you know, I, I I had him over. He used to he used to come over and hang out with me, and uh, I visited his house. I was probably over there probably like at least fifty times. You know, we were, like, we weren't super tight, but uh, Ken was the kind of guy who um, everybody knew who he was, and everyone was cool with him, because he was, he never once, ever, did this social move of trying to put himself above anybody. He was always uh, just, just cool, you know, he was a good guy, he really was. Obviously, there were some issues. Obviously, he had been through some shit. And um, I don't understand what what it was that made him. Uh, but, but now he's got a great story because what happened was they uh, pepper sprayed in the front. They, they like tear gassed him somehow in the front door. And they were banging on the door with a the battering ram, like, we're going to come in. So they forced him out the back where they had a whole squad of guys waiting with flashbang grenades that, that went off. And then they tackled him. So they got him. They took him down. As the story goes, I look to the left. There's tear gas and the battering ram. I look to the right. It's a flashbang grenade. And a whole squad of guys charging at, at me with riot gear. <laughs> Poor Ken. So I know that that they they took him down peacefully. Uh, the reports were egregiously exaggerated. It wasn't like he had a hostage, and you know the whole thing was kind of blown way out of proportion. But at the same point, when the Commonwealth us Edison guys come out, you can't be pointing guns at them, lighting firecrackers, and yelling "Get off my land!" So he did get he did get arrested. There was all kinds of people uh, commenting in like the Chicago Tribune article about it. And then his mom responded. She was like, "He's a good kid." People were demonizing him. So I'm sure that he got some counseling. I do, I seriously doubt that they locked him up and threw away the key. I really don't know the outcome of the standoff. But I'm going to get over there. I want to ask him. I'm going to pop in and conveniently have a recording device and ask him, hey, do you mind if I set this up and I'll, like, interview you? You could tell your story. Because I would, I would love to, uh, hopefully he's still there. I got to get over there. I got to talk to this guy. Would that make for an interesting video? I would certainly love to get him on film and ask him about this uh, the go kart and the chainsaw and the pepper spray, battering ram, tear gas, and the squadron of guys in riot gear. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my Ken. That's my buddy Ken. Uh, Ken Carter. 
guy with a real similar name. That's that movie. You're going to want to check that one out. So you can go ahead and type in The Devil at Your Heels. Type that into your YouTube search. Because this movie is on YouTube and you can watch that right now. It's really worth your time. But that's the story of my buddy Ken. And in the... Uh, there. I couldn't really find much info. There's one video with no comments on it. Uh, so I'll put the link to that in the description. And if you want to check it out, at least back up that I'm I'm not telling a tall tale myself. So you guys try to stay cool, hug your pets, and peace.